Good morning, you're listening to FloridaLady.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Rick Moon, who's a senior account executive with Propex. Rick, how you doing? I'm doing super. How about you, Kim? I'm great. Good to be with you. A little background. Most people know that Propex is the largest independent producer of carpet backing, and you can't make carpet without backing. Some people might know that I was in the backing business a while ago, and Back in those days, you could really tell a lot about what was going on in the industry based on which customers were buying, based on how long the shutdown was over the 4th of July. So I thought I'd reach out to you and see, maybe you can give us another historic perspective. When you're talking about those days, those were the good old days, and life was so simple back then. And Yeah, the whole town, Dalton, would just shut down. We'd all go to Panama City for a week, the restaurants, the barbershops. All the mills were shut down, but nowadays it's totally different. The market's different. They're running so much tighter with their inventories, they can't afford to shut down for a whole week. And then also the concentration of the business in these big accounts, they may throttle back or modulate their production, whereas they don't take it all the way down. They may have a facility that needs some work and they can shift production from one to another or scale back a plant or ramp up slightly before, those kind of things. So it's, we don't get the same read that we used to because basically the town is still running. Mm-hmm. All right, so just a little bit more details. They would shut down around the 4th because that was a good time for them to preventive maintenance their equipment. Many people know that when you make carpet, you're actually heating a, a polymer in some of the processes and like extrusion i mean it runs all the time because when you shut it down all that polymer turns to a solid and you have to clean it all up so they just chose this point in time around the fourth and if the mills were taking a week off you knew that there was plenty of inventory and they could take their time and if they were just taking a couple of days you knew that orders were tight right right and that was a lot easier to get a read back then and so as we look, though, and we compare what's going on in July of 2013 versus, say, 2012, while there's been a lot of things that have changed and we can get into some of that, give us a year-over-year read on how you sense the business is doing. A report from the trenches, if you will. Right. Residential business seems to be better this year than it was by 4 or 5% mm-hmm. from last year. But that's not specifically our business levels. Our business levels could be more than that or less than that. Right. But the market in general, we say residential right now is is strong. Mm -hmm. And commercial is solid is what I'd say for commercial right now. Well, and another thing you can tell by who's buying, and let's go back to that a minute without getting into specifics, but if you have a mill that we know focuses on the affluent on the upper end of the business and you see them buying proportionately more, than a mill that serves the multifamily or the entry-level piece of the business. That also gives you a read on who's buying. Tell us what you can tell from that. You know, my take on it is it's sort of bimodal. There's the lower end of the market seems really strong, and the upper end of the market seems strong. Now, when you start looking at you know, total consumption of carpet, most people know that the piece of the pie is, is remaining constant. It might even be slipping just a little bit. So as you mentioned earlier, it's a consolidated market. There's you know bigger players selling most of the volume. But one of the things that's changed is the way they make carpet. Through this recession, there's been a change from staple to BCF or bulk continuous filament. When you go from staple to BCF, it streamlines the process. There's fewer people involved, and it's just a much more efficient way of making yarn. And then there's also been a change from piece dyed over to solution dyed. Yeah, there's trends going in that direction. You know, it's not that nobody's dying anymore. Mm -hmm. But when you get out on the edges and the new capacity coming on, there's the process shifts going on in the market. And again, that makes a lot of these things hard to read because we all know there's been a lot of yarn capacity dropped out of the market, mainly in spun yarns. Some of that's related to styling. Some of it's related to cost of manufacture. So it's a little harder to, to understand. But there is a lot of investment going on in the carpet industry right now. And that is a really positive sign for the future. But when you start talking about inventory and projections and being able to build and hold versus ship to order, when you talk about solution, Dad, I mean, you better get it right. Because when you make that yarn... 
it's got to be the color of what the consumer's demanding, right? Right. When you're running Instacolor dye ranges, you can make color on the fly yeah. and service small orders and have a very broad color line. But as you get into making color on the tufting machine, you tend to make it in bigger blocks, especially on the residential side where you're dealing with krills instead of beams. You know, solution dye has always been popular in commercial, but it's been put up on small beams and run small orders. But blending the economies of commercial and residential with solution dye yarns and actually doing it on krill racks with limited color lines, it is a different business model. All right. Well, just one last quick question. You know, as we've been through this recession, and as you said just a minute ago, there is some investment going on. Uh, is there a concern that as the market continues to recover, that there might not be enough materials either on the yarn side or the backing side to satisfy an uptick in demand? Right. That seems to be a, the rumor mill in Dalton. Is things are tightening up to the point that, that raw materials could become more critical than they are right now. I don't, you know, I'm not saying that we're out of goods, but it, this is a really confusing little subject. You know, you think you're coming out of a recession and things are bad, but this, there's still a, a ton of volume out there. And with these shutdowns of some technologies and then bringing on these other technologies, we could find ourselves in some shortages. But that's why the capital is flowing into these areas and the machinery is coming on. It's really, a, you know, a race right now is to be ready for this next surge. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully we will see that surge. Again, we've been talking to Rick Moon, who's a senior account executive with Propex about the state of demand for carpets in the Dalton area. And you've been listening to Kempar and Floridelli.net.